What's up, everybody? Welcome to Lunatic Froggy. Today, we're going to react to um, Gemma Grace Journey. We're going to do a video on autism. It has Lunatic Dad in it. And then we are going to do an autism test online, which is the one she did. She does have a big heart. Love that Gemma, I do. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I hope everybody's weekend is going well. And today is a special request video about the different types of autism and different levels of autism. This was requested by Lunatic Dad. I will link his channel in the video description so you guys can go and check out Lunatic Dad. So yeah, let's. I'll link Gemma. So that way you guys can go check her out. Let's get into it. The different types of autism are autism spectrum disorder, autism spectrum condition, atypical autism, classic autism, canna autism, autism per pervasive de developmental disorder, high functioning autism and pathological demand avoidance. So... This is because of the recent changes to the main diagnostic manual, which is called the DSM for short. And I believe we're now on DSM-5. So the Asperger, Asperger syndrome or Asperger's. Asperger syndrome profile, the clinician, cl clinician might describe someone as having a Asperger profile if there has been no clinically significant speech delay in their language or cognitive develop, development issues. They may also have specific delays in their motor development as well as motor clumsiness. So for me, I I fall under the Asperger profile because I'm very high functioning. I can do things on myself, but I'm very, very clumsy. I have issues with my motor coordination. So again, that would be where I fall on that. So then next we have demand avoidance profile, a cl clinician might describe a person as having a demand avoidant profile if they are driven to excessively avoiding demands and expectations of every day. Underpinning this avoidance is an extremely high level of conforming to social demands and not being in control of the situation or their environment. So next, that's page one done. Next, we've got Canna autism. Canna autism, also known as autistic disorder, Beginning in childhood, it is marked by presence of abnormal or impaired development in social interaction, communication, and restricted behaviour. I had to fall in between the first two, but let's keep going. And interests. Classic autism, often described as profound autism, canners autism, or low-functioning autism. So that's... The I think low-functioning and autism are the people that don't really speak. I mean, there are low-functioning autistic people who do speak. Um, they just can't do anything else. Different types of autism that there is. So, I hope you're... And then the different types of autism is there is autism spectrum, Asperger's syndrome, pervasive developmental PDD NOS, which stands for pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified. Autism spectrum disorder is a term used and to include and replace of subtypes of autism including Asperger's childhood disintegrative disorder. Uh, my little brother has Asperger's, so. Disorder and per pervasive de developmental disorder. The DSM-5, which is the fifth edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders published in 2013, 
defines autism as persistent deficits in social communication and social interaction across the context, not always accounted for by general developmental delays, restricted repetitive patterns of behaviour, interests or activities. Symptoms must be present in very early childhood but may not become fully manifest until social demand exceeds their limited capacity. Symptoms together limit and impair everyday functioning. So I have... So what I'm hearing is on that one, um, when somebody gets to the point where they're just not socially accepting anything anymore, um, they really just kind of peace out. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give it a like. Please comment. Please share. And please subscribe to my channel. Hey, and thank out. you very much. For okay. So we went through that. Now. Froggy went and found the website that Gemma took a test on before she could get in for her diagnostics. Or diagnosis. Not diagnostics. Diagnostics is card. Diagnosis is people. Um, so, I'm going to take that test with you guys live. Well, on this video. Okay. Let's do this. It says, question one, I prefer to do things on my own rather than with other people. Slightly agree. The reason I slightly agree is because I do get on streams with people, but <laughs> in real life, I'd rather not see people. I prefer doing things the same way, for instance, morning routine or trips to the supermarket. I'm going to say slightly agree because a lot of times it depends on what I need, but it's always like I have a routine. I get all my food and then I go get my cheesy bites and that that's just because at the end of the day, um, it's my little reward system for being a good little girl and not spazzing out at the grocery market. So let's get back let's go answer this one i find myself becoming strongly observed in something even obsessional um i would definitely have to agree because like when i get on something i really want to stay on it and then like my mind can't get off of it until i finish it i am very sensitive to noise and will wear earplugs or cover my ears in certain situations um yeah i have to agree on that one because certain noises i cannot stand and i'm like ah my fucking ears they hurt sometimes people say i'm being rude even though i think i'm being polite slightly agree because i try to be as polite as i can but some people find it rude I find it easy to image, <laughs> imagine, <laughs> oops, what characters from a book might look like. Slightly agree. I find it easy to talk in groups of people. Definitely, di well, I slightly disagree. Because, like, if I'm on the panel, uh, sometimes I, ha I have a hard time. I am more interested in finding out about things than people slightly agree people scare me unless it's murderers but that would classify as murderers right that wouldn't be people that would be the thing that they did um i find numbers dates and strings of inf information fascinating to a degree i'm gonna slightly disagree because that's more of a I don't find numbers fascinating because numbers confuse me, but I remember numbers. I prefer non-fictional books and films to fiction. Uh, non-fiction is not real? No. Non-fiction is real. Not fiction is, or fiction is fake. So I'm going to slightly disagree because I do like the historical aspects of things but at the same point in time i like a little bit of fantasy in there 
I find it upsetting if my daily routine is up, uh, is upset or changed. <sighs> I'm going to slightly disagree because I do get upset if shit gets changed. It's difficult for me to understand others' facial expression and body language. We're not going to talk about that one. I don't have any problem making small talk with new people. Slightly disagree. I notice very small changes in a person's appearance. Slightly agree. Sometimes, if I'm actually paying attention, I will. When I was young, I used to play lots of let's pretend or imaginary games. I'm going to slightly disagree with that one. I liked collect. I like collecting information about things I'm interested in. Definitely agree. I like meeting new people. Definitely disagree. <laughs> I do not like meeting people. As a matter of fact, my neighbors we mow their lawn. Well, <laughs> Roy and Jordan do, and they keep asking me for coffee. And there's so many times like <laughs> I don't wanna. <laughs> People close to me say I talk about the same thing repetitively. Oh, yes. I find it easy to work out what people are thinking or feeling just by looking at their facial expressions. Um, slightly disagree. New social situations make me feel anxious. Yes. It's important for me to me to carefully plan any activities I'm going to do. I'm going to slightly agree because when shit gets thrown in there I find it, I, I get irritated. I find it hard to work out with people's intentions are. Um, I'm going to slightly agree because I always misconstrue them. I would find it really hard to play imaginary games with children. Uh, I'm going to slightly disagree because I've learned how to do it with my kids. But like D&D &D I have issues with because I can't do all that shit. I'm, I am a good diplomat and can help easily help easy ease difficult social or work situations slightly disagree because i don't care if it's at work it stays at work if you have a problem with somebody go talk to them i'm often the last person to understand a joke um slightly disagree because sometimes i'm the first person i like doing things spontaneously slightly disagree sometimes i like surprises sometimes i don't if I am interrupted doing something, I find it hard to get back to what I was doing beforehand. Definitely agree. I notice patterns in things all the time. Hmm. I'm going to slightly agree. I have some very strong interests and get upset if I can't pursue them. Uh, slightly agree. I don't get upset. I get sad. I can tell if someone I am talking to is getting bored. Um, yes. I'm going to go slightly disagree because sometimes I can't. Okay. Let's see here. Adult autism test results. Based on your results, there's a strong possibility that you're autistic. So... No tendencies, few tendencies, slight tendencies, borderline indications, and strong likelihood. 24, uh, 20 to 30. What should I do now? Go talk to them. How much does autism assessment cost? If you're in the UK, it's 2,250 pounds. Holy shit! I don't know what it's here in the United States, but that's my uh, test results. 
I hope you enjoyed. I love y'all. Bye.